Hello, this is a lecture about the readings on the effect of the COVID-19 recession. We can think of the COVID-19 recession effects at, in three buckets. The acronym for those buckets are OAS. The O stands for the COVID-19 recession could have ordinary effects. We have a set of experiences with recessions. We have a set of rules of thumb effects of a recessions, and perhaps that's all we're seeing. They come in different flavors with different actors, but we may be seeing the ordinary effects of a recession. Or we could see a recession that is so deep um, and goes to the heart of everybody's identity and everybody's actions, and it affects the whole world that the recession just accelerates, that's the A part, tendencies that were already there nationally and internationally. So it could be ordinary, that's the O, it could accelerate trends, that's the A, or it could be a kind of a recession and an event that changes the structure, the S, the OAS, the structure of consumer demand and productive activities. So let's look at changes that are happening due to the recession that have to do with equity. The first thing we'll look at is how the recession and the virus is affecting communities um, based on their racial identities and their socioeconomic status. We know that 40% of the people below who earned below $40,000 lost their jobs. That was a socioeconomic uh, effect on the distribution of unemployment. Those communities that tend to be more I, identified with racial minorities were hurt harder by um, unemployment. That's actually typical. Um, blacks and marginalized people in the labor force are the last in and the first out. They're, li they're LIFO. And so the gap between the unemployment rate between blacks and whites always goes up in recessions and almost merges in expansions. It's actually when we know we might hit a recession is when the black-white unemployment rate is about the same. That's a real signal that we're ready for a recession. Um, what is being accelerated are the um, socioeconomic conditions um, um, that come from um, lifelong disparities and access to um, all the aspects of community that causes longevity and, and health. And so this virus happens to be one that excites and stimulates the immune response. And anybody, any groups in society that for um, stratification reasons have a compromised immune system are going to be hardest hit by this uh, virus. They will be reluctant to go back to work, have workplaces that are less safe. The same workplace um, could be much safer for someone who's not, um, doesn't have a suppressed immune system. So it can accelerate the health divide um, between um, whites and blacks um, because in general, a minority and poor population has a suppressed immune system. Um, the um, accelerationist idea is exacerbated by the um, com confluence of the, the Black Lives Matters movement accelerating the Michelle Alexanders and Derek Hamiltons and others theorists on the role that race has in society that goes something like this. Hey, uh, a racialized uh, system of mass incar incarceration leads to less viability in the labor market and in the health distribution. That has a capitalist component that's profitable and we are exciting a movement that makes racism less profitable. And you see whites and blacks combining to reject that political economy. I think that COVID-19 in differential impact on blacks are help fueling the Black Lives Matter, which seems to be a response to criminal injustice, but may actually be accelerated and exacerbated 
um, by the effects of the virus. Another place where we could have a ordinary uh, effect of a recession is when there's more unemployment and less paid work. It's women who do more of the unpaid necessary um, work at home. The care unpaid care economy is on overdrive as the shelter in place orders particularly demanded more of that unpaid work. And we also see women located in low income jobs and they're part of the 40 under 40 um, who were more likely to lose their jobs. So I am gainsaying that the COVID recession combined with the particular effect of the virus and the response we needed from the virus has um, had ordinary effects on women and accelerated the consequences of unpaid care work. The um, next place we're going to look at is the increase in uh, wealth inequality. This is very much a characteristic of a recession. That's why I gave you the reading from Ed Wolf about the concentration of wealth that happened after the Great Recession of 2008. If you read his book and you read a whole skyscraper um, um, stack of literature, on wealth distribution after a recession, you'll see a common, common effect, and that is the rich get richer after a recession. And this recession seems to be ordinary, absolutely no difference. Who is getting rich is changing its um, its form. Bezos, um, people who own tech, who people who own online uh, retail are getting richer, but in every sector, the bottom of the producers, those people located on the upward part of the supply curve, the people that only came in because prices were a little high and demand was high, they're the unproductive high cost producers, the small ones in scale are the ones that are first going to, um, to fall. So your local restaurant, when it comes back online, may have different owners and behind that owner is probably somebody who's more wealthy. So we will also see an, uh, an ordinary reaction to a recession is a consolidation of wealth and an increase in wealth inequality uh, because people who are rich to begin with are able to not have to sell their assets, hang on to them, and buy the cheap assets of those who were desperate, not liquid enough, who had to sell them. So there are only a few people who were able to buy at the dip of the stock market, and those are the people who had the money. So that is why ordinarily companies get more concentrated, industries become more concentrated with monopolies and oligopolies, and wealthy households become more wealthy after a recession. Um, I showed you two pieces that make that claim. No, three. One is from Ed Wolf. The other one is from Hillary Hoynes to talk about what happened to the poor after the Great Recession. And one is by me, which is a short blog summarizing the literature about what's happening now, how the rich are getting richer, billionaires have increased their holdings in, in two weeks, in the, sorry, the two months since the shelter in place um, were put into order. On the accelerationist view on the racial divide in health, um, I've offered you not only a interview with an epidemiologist about how pre-existing um, racial disparities affected the exposure and vulnerability to the virus, um, but also an article about how comorbidities interacts with, with the virus and how that will lead to an already pre-existing longevity divide between blacks and whites. Did you know that in 1950, Black men who reached the age of 55 and white men who reached the age of 55 were expected to have the same human lifespan, another um, 20 years. It turns out, um, fast forward 40 years later, and the divide between the 55-year-old 55 55-year-old 55 black man and the 55-year-old white man actually widened to about six years with a black man dying earlier. Um, ordinary is... As I said, the ordinary effects are gender and wealth inequality. The acceleration of effects are on racial divide and longevity and, and employment. 
Another ordinary effect, this is just by summary, is that the uh, blacks and marginal groups will be unemployed first. I'm now going to go to my last point is whether or not this novel virus is going to create a novel reshuffling of the components of GDP in a more, per, um, in a more um, permanent basis. And that goes back to what we talked about today. Will consumers' households, those entities that make up for consumer spending, a 70% of the of the economy that's um, private spending, that's 70% that's represented by C. Let me get that for you. C, will the components of that private demand permanently change? Will we shift um, from home production of meals um, away from restaurants permanently? Or will we actually assent to higher taxes to get more government spending on public goods. I will pay more taxes to pay for vaccines, cleaner consumption spaces and cleaner workspaces, um, perhaps um, more surge capacities in, in the hospitals. So those are what we'll talk about in our discussion session tomorrow. Whether or not we'll have an ordinary response to this recession, O, oh, whether or not we'll have just an accelerationist response, that what was there before would just be accelerated and heightened, that's the A, or whether or not we'll have a structural um, change and mainly consumer demand that will drive changes in government and investment spending, or will it be a combination of all three? Questions more than answers. OAS, will this COVID-19 recession have the effect that are ordinary, accelerationist or structural. Thanks. See you tomorrow.